Alrighty now, things are starting to get exciting because we're about to build the quiz. So this video assumes that you have an adequate number of questions in your bank to actually pull from those banks to build a quiz. So I'm back in Mike Harris's biology course and you'll notice in his top lock that there are several items that he has here, some of which are hidden. That means that students couldn't see them right now. Those are the grayed out ones. But uh, several items that have those red checkmark icons, those are posted quizzes. So I am going to go into this chapter six uh, video. And so if I click on it, uh, this is a, basically what the student would see is a button to attempt the quiz. But what the teacher sees um, is a settings block. Now I don't know if you're going to see your settings block on the right hand side or the left hand side. So look in both places. But what is in here are important things related to the quiz. So if you've built a quiz, you look in the settings, there is the preview option, really important because after you're done with your quiz, you're going to want to click on that and you're going to want to take a look at it. So just to see how each of these looks in relationship to the entire quiz. So that's one thing that you should note is to see the whole quiz, you'll look in that block. Now, the other thing is, is if you want to uh, change the overall settings for the quiz, you'll click on Edit Settings. And that's the first thing that you fill out when you add a quiz. So I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And then lastly, you have the ability to edit quiz. That means edit which questions you put on it from the bank. So I am going to show you um, a number of things. First of all, so if I wanted to add a quiz to the page, I would click on Add an Activity, and then I would choose Quiz. And when I do that, it would bring me to the page where I fill out the fields for the quiz settings. So instead of showing you that blank, I'm just going to go right in to um, a finished quiz to show you what that looks like filled out. So, oops, sorry. Oh, yes, this is it. Oh. Okay, so this is what it would look like. You would have a title, and if you're Mike, you know, you don't necessarily capitalize every parts about it, but I would. Um, maybe he wanted to say video test instead of test video. Who knows? I think he was just generating this fast. You could put an introduction. That's essentially the thing you'd put at the top of a paper quiz, so you could write that if you'd like. Now you could set dates to open the quiz and close the quiz to your students so they could get into it um, when it starts or when it opens and then they would not be able to get into it after it's closed. You do not necessarily have to do that because you can also hide the quiz with the winker icon on your home page. You have the possibility of creating a time limit so if you want it to be a time test you could certainly do that. And this is um, where the options get powerful. You can allow students to take this one time or you can allow them to take it more than one time, which I think is great because uh, you could essentially use the assessment as a learning tool instead of an assessment. Now, another cool thing that I could show you later is that if you allow just one attempt, it is possible for you to override that for specific students amazing. So you might have people with uh, different IEPs or that sort of thing and that could be helpful for you to customize the experience for the individual. So if they are allowed to take it more than one time, how do you want them to be graded? Should it be the average, their best grade, what they got on the first attempt or the last attempt? That's your option. The grade category is irrelevant to us because we don't use the Moodle gradebook. We use Campus. And then the layout of the questions can be in the order you place them, or you can have them shuffled. Again, if you shuffle them, or you may want to consider shuffling them if you're going to have the students taking the quiz in a lab. But if the order of the questions is important, then you should certainly leave it as the default, which is as shown on the edit screen. If it's going to be a long quiz or test, let's say it's 100 points, it is way better to only have a small number of questions, you know, like five or ten on a particular page because then after each page they get to save. So if the internet blew up halfway through the test, you wouldn't have to have them start over uh, at, on a different date. So break it up 
it's just much better. It doesn't take the pages as long to load if there is less content on any given page. So again, your question behavior, I sort of feel like I remember getting this option when you were building the quiz questions, but you can shuffle the answers with this option. And then how the questions behave, this has to do with if you added feedback for a particular question, you when that feedback would be visible to students. Now, this there that that was the feedback that was related to the specific questions and this also gives students opportunity to review that feedback there's a lot of different options here keep in mind that two of these categories is when the quiz is open or after the quiz is closed if you didn't actually set an open and a closed date earlier up up farther in these settings those are irrelevant so these are type of things you may need to play with and if you have questions don't hesitate to ask me all right um, show the users picture when they're taking the quiz that's simple enough decimal places in the grades totally up to you to round to whole numbers and then decimal places for individual questions you can require a password, and ultimately, if you wanted to, you could limit where the students actually can take, the, take this exam to a particular address or computer lab. We rarely, rarely do that. Last thing is um, you can make it so that the student, after they're done taking the test, gets some sort of message or feedback based on the percent correct that they attained. So for example, if you have, they get 100%, you could write something in here like, you rock it, girl or boy. 90%, you almost rock it, whatever. So you can, you can set this, but you do not have to. You can leave those blank. And then we'll skip the group modes. And then what you would do is you'd hit save and display. So when I hit save and display, um, it brings you back to this page that I showed you earlier. So now if you want to start to add questions to the test, you could click on edit quiz. So on your right hand side is your question bank. On your left hand side are the questions you're putting in the test. So if I wanted to go add one of those cell questions, I would click on the pull down menu to view the bank of questions and I'm gonna choose that category. And then if I wanted to add one of these, if it was just one, I could hover on those little uh, triangle things that are going to the left and I could add to the quiz. Or if I wanted to do several at one time, I could put check marks in front of a bunch of them like that and then I could click with selected add to the quiz. Alrighty. If you wanted to edit the questions, you could do that right in this page. You also get an idea of what, the, what kind of questions there are, they are by looking at the different icons. This is the icon for a multiple choice question. So the bank is on the right, you select questions, and then you move those questions to the left. These are the five questions that have been added to this quiz already. Notice that the first one, you just you look at the icon, that is an icon that represents a description, which is not actually a question. And in this case, it's a block of text with the embedded video that the students watch before they answer the five questions. Then um, you have the five questions. And if you wanted to move them around, you could do that with these arrows. If you want to remove them from the quiz, you click on the X. That does not remove them from your question bank. It just takes them out of your quiz. Now, if you want to put point values in for each question, I don't think Mike understood this part. You know, you could literally put a zero in for the description, and then you could make these all one point test questions and then the maximum grade in this test would really be five. So I could save that maximum grade and oh I see what happens. Hmm, I don't get it. I didn't get it. I would have to test that. Hmm, okay. 
So once you've done all of this, um, keep in mind that now there are tabs at the top. So the order in paging is where you would go to add questions, delete questions, or to move questions around where you have access to your question bank, but you can very easily get back to editing your quiz on the other tab. I see. This is where you put in the grade for each point. Okay, so if you go to order and paging, I think this somehow just shows you um, the order. That's another way of ordering them. I don't know, that's confusing Moodle people. Very, very, very confusing. But this is where you put the number of points assigned to each question. Okay, so last thing you could do is if you wanted to go back to the breadcrumb up here to the quiz name, you could do that overriding. So where did I, oh, here we go, user overrides. Or you could create a group and, and assign some overriding. So if I click user overrides, add a user override, you can pick any student and you can um, give them different a different number of attempts allowed or you could give them a time limit if you wanted to, or you could require a password from that student, uh, a variety of different things. But that helps you to customize for individual students or individual groups. Lastly, I just one more time wanted to remind you that if you hit preview, you are going to see the quiz as it would basically appear to the students. Next video up is looking at the data that students see, or that, excuse me, that teachers see after a student has finished the quiz.